Okay, people. Hello at the Lookout Mountain Sunrise. Hello to the Grahams and the Moors and the Lintners and the Bowdens. I came to this Lookout Mountain because my sister came to go to college at Covenant College on Lookout Mountain. Partly because my mother's research in Presbyterianism discovered that there was a church gathering that was unusual in Chattanooga. Some very important things going on. The Vine House and the New City Fellowship black folks and white, white folks meeting together, which is actually quite radical in this area. I'm from New Jersey. And when I was a little boy, I lived in the towns that were the northern terminus of the Underground Railroad. And when I would walk to elementary school, I would stop and hold hands with a guy named Carlton Smith, a little boy. And the skin of Carlton Smith was still possibly the darkest skin that I had ever been close to. His skin was almost purple black. But we would hold hands and walk to school. The school that is now the police station in Ocean City. Yes, my elementary school is now a police station. And I think it's the little jail too. And then Directly below us, you can barely see it through this tree, is a certain building that's very prominent in the Moccasin Bend because it's all natural area. And then there's this one physical, large physical compound. That's Moccasin Bend, Tennessee State Psychiatric Hospital. And I would visit that hospital from time to time. My father quit Christianity and he actually never discovered the things that I discovered about true church, true ecclesia. True church, true ecclesia is actually a meeting in a home with honesty times and communion. And the foundation of true ecclesia was just the day-to-day -day life of the people in the covenant of Moses. And the two peculiar things about the men of Jesus's age, these are ordinary people, but they're joyful. They sing praise and they enjoy the God of Israel. But the two peculiar things about the men, if you saturate and study and understand the happy day-to-day -day life, the two peculiar things about the men are number one, they have a rule. There must be 10 men standing together first in order to do the most important thing of the day, which is the morning prayer for the world and all of its people. Because Yahweh said to the Israelites, look, I didn't pick you people because you're good. I picked you people because you had some 
elders who actually obeyed my unusual and challenging voice. And because of your elders long ago, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I have selected you, the descendants of Jacob, twelve sons and twelve tribes which have turned into millions of people. I have selected you to put my safety instructions on and so I also select you to bless everyone in the world because I am the God of everybody. I am the God of everybody. Everybody and everywhere. I am the God of everybody and everywhere. So, ten men must stand together every morning and speak peace and refreshment over the whole crazy human family. That is the most important reason for the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies that has the supernatural box with three things in it. That's the reason for the tabernacle and the temple is to pray every day for the entire crazy human family. Pray for, pray for all of them every day. But 10 men must be present in one place in order to begin the prayer. The funny rabbi says, well, there's always women and children ready to pray, but it's a little bit difficult to get the men going sometimes. And uh, so one thing, this is before Messiah showed up. One thing is you got to have 10 men together. Beautiful view here. You got to have 10 men together. To do the morning prayer. Ten men. That's number one. This is just about the men, okay? So you have to we have to do a morning prayer every day. Every day. To touch every living person, all those in authority, all those who are suffering, all those who call on the name Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, God of heaven and earth, life-giving spirit, spirit of loving kindness, the God who sees, the God who hears, the God who is a protector and a shield, the God who is a provider, the Spirit who is a provider. You're praying for the people who acknowledge the Spirit, originator of life. And you're praying for the people who did not, do not acknowledge the Spirit, the originator of life. Because it is written in Romans 2, there are atheists who behave by conscience in a way that God loves, and there are those who claim to love God who have just cast off his instructions. How do you think God is going to judge between those two people? The atheist who operates by conscience in a way that is pure and good and the one who claims to know God, who operates in a way that everyone in the community can agree, this is evil. This is not appropriate. How is God going to judge? Romans 2. 
God equals conscience. Now, if you discover that there are supernatural powers and there are practices that are taught by Messiah that really benefit you and your children, if you discover that there is a supernatural visitation and there is a spirit gift, if you discover benefits and you do not take those benefits onto your life because the benefits also come with a cost, then, well, maybe your conscience is not going to be evaluated as pure. So, to the Lintners and the Grahams and the Moors and the Bowdens and all others who might hear me, this trip to Chattanooga and this storm that drove me out of Florida is the time when I have finally assembled a simple way, a simple practice that if it were in place when I was a little boy, I would not, I tell you, it did not have to be the way that it was. If the honesty before communion in a cheerful way, if the discernment of each one of us having demons and the fact that demons increase after the quote-unquote salvation because they come in in tricky religious ways where you're still avoiding some of your primary sins. I mean, America and Americans have been engaged in and involved in culturally acceptable sins for a very, very long time. Things that are just impossibly against some of the Christ way and Christ teachings. American lifestyle. is largely selfish and forgetting the simple Christ practices that were in place for about 300 years with waves of persecution, many slaughtered. If the Christ principles and lifestyle and practice are just ignored and brushed away, my gosh, there's gonna be more kids like me who live 40 years, 40 years, not having the maintenance that I needed. Two set of practices, how to set up your house as a happy communion group place with basically just two elements on the wall. A rack for some prayer shawls so that the covering of the shoulders of the men and the heads of the women in the deepest times of praise and prophesying is easy. You are providing the fabric. God cares about fabric. When Yeshua was crucified, the fabric of the temple was torn and the temple era was ended. And the atonement for sin is no longer the death of animals with the reading of sin lists. And even the Jews don't do that. Passover Seder no longer has the reading of the sin lists. And the shift went to the communion time where the individuals admitted their faults before the communion. So number one is the setting up of your house as a happy little communion space to help keep, keep people's souls clear and peaceful.
And then the setting up of a way of monitoring and blessing the girl and woman form and the boy and man form as a group of friends born in different forms we care for one another in a way of insight and understanding it is written it is written it is written seek understanding seek understanding so if we understand one another as friends First of all, we understand that we have specific male and female strengths, abilities, and types of insight. And we have male and female weaknesses and shortcomings that are generalized natural The flow of the man is surrounded by a comforting, pleasurable sensation and stimulation. The flow of the woman is surrounded by a measure of discomfort and pain. And it is written in Leviticus 15, if you read between the lines, that the entire group of friends should actually treat the women and the girls in the time of their flow with a special blessing and care, love, affection, words of encouragement, honor, inspiration. So I announce to you that this trip to Lookout Mountain, I have assembled the things in the home, just in the home, in the day-to-day life, because I was motivated by the death of former drug addicts who went home and no pastor of standard church A pastor should be called a congregational leader. A true pastor is selected in the process described in Acts chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. The Holy Spirit in a group of people around a communion cup in a neighborhood, the Holy Spirit reveals one person to be the happy grandpa, the elder. And these people are gathered together by sent ones, people who are traveling and speaking truth, traveling and singing and praising, traveling and speaking truth, traveling and being mocked and rejected and even hated, sometimes killed. The sent ones, full of good cheer, are opposed and slandered and really misunderstood. Jesus promises that if you're a sent one and a truth speaker, that you are going to be misunderstood. He promises that. If you are a true truth speaker, you will be treated like the former truth speakers, all of whom were killed by the people that they were sent to. Yes, all of the prophets were killed by the people. Did you know that? I didn't know that. All of the prophets who wrote the Bible were killed by the people that they were trying to lovingly speak to. That's the bottom line. So I'm just announcing that after the passing of Suzanne Moore's death, Suzanne Elizabeth Moore, Elizabeth, 
my sister's middle name. After the passing of Suzanne Elizabeth Moore, who carried a fire of God, I was the one who repetitively suggested to her to look and see what Heidi and Roland Baker are doing with the children. But she never communicated with me, ever, at all, because there was a complete statement going on over and over again. I have a toxic family. I have a toxic family. And my father's rejection of the Christianity way and joining the Freud and Jung religion hangs labels on individuals and groups of people, which is a way of making money for pharmaceutical industries. Labeling and accusing the accuser of the brethren, the attacker of the brethren, the adversary of the brethren. So on this time, my first trip to Chattanooga, after Suzanne is gone, I make this announcement to you that the marvelous playlists that I've recently assembled on Grandpa Honesty Guy First Care for the Women and the Girls and Family Honesty Church which you can find in my saved playlists and some other ones. It's a new beginning, and my intention is to go to New Jersey to tell the story of the Quakers and West Jersey and publicly invite people to outdoor silent meetings. And at the rise of the one hour silent meeting, we will discuss the things that came to our hearts and then closed meeting, meetings, private meetings in the homes. Private meetings in the homes where people are reminded that if you come to God, the demonic attack will become more sneaky. It will become a religious pride and small-mindedness attack and you will not you will stop learning you will stop learning you will stop researching and you will say we are so right we are so right we have finally come to the place where we are really right but still ignoring an entire enormous aspect of the things of Elohim things of the spirit realm. Do si di ti na malava ko to re ti ti na. Di si di ti ti na na ni da ni. Ko to re ti na na ma ko to na na. No night parking. Do si di ti ti na. This is a new beginning. Hello from sunrise. Look out mountain. <laughs>